watching the news in the United States of America, I got to tell you, it's funny, it's depressing, it's all kinds of things. When you watch the lawmakers on the left, the Democrats, in action, you get a headache. I do, at least at nighttime, I want to go home and kick my dog and swear at my cat and drink a bottle of rum. I mean, these people are totally out of control. We can't impeach the president. Let's come up with something else. What else can we do? Their whole day is focused on the president with regard to bringing him down. Shouldn't it be on bringing the country up? Isn't that their job? Should these people get a paycheck? I don't think so. There's a bunch of goofy things going on. Somehow Trump manages to defend himself and call everybody names every day and still work. That's interesting. He seems to have that ability. He doesn't sleep a whole bunch, I guess. And he kind of gets the job done, right? I mean, the economy in the United States of America has never been so good. Over 6 million men and women now are working and they couldn't find work for many, many years. I mean, it's the strongest economy that I think that it's, there's ever been in the world. And this guy's just getting started. And, and these people just won't leave him alone. So imagine cooking soup in the kitchen with 40 people in there throwing soup at you, spitting at you, swearing at you, and hitting you and all that. And you still manage to kick out a good meal. That's what's going on with him. But back to the Democrats, they shouldn't get paid for this kind of destruction. I don't think obstruction, destruction, they're doing bad stuff. Dumb is forever, I understand that, but someone needs to step up and say, you guys, you are paid to do a job. You wanna call somebody names, do it after hours, like 5 p.m. maybe started then, but these guys do it 24 seven, it's not good for the country. You know what, uh, Gillette now, they're, they're trying in America, particularly also in Canada and other countries, but more so in the United States, they're trying really hard to force uh, their, their views, I guess, down the throats of, of American citizens and, and with regards to homosexuality. Gillette is a razor blade. Men shave. Okay, then, why don't you advertise that? Instead, they always have to put a twist on it. And I say always, over the course of the last couple of years, certainly. And, and we'll call that always. And it's bad. Why are they doing that? Like, I don't shave with Gillette razor blades anymore because I want to hear about homosexuality when I'm looking at a razor blade. Good bloody grief. I mean, why are we doing this? Uh, you got to watch some of the commercials to really get the full impact of what I'm saying. But it's just another thing that's not necessary. You want to be a politician? Go be a Democrat. Well, I guess obviously this guy is that runs Gillette. But go be one and get paid and don't work. <laughs> at least you're getting paid. I guess kind of sort of maybe. Here we got a guy. He's a self-admit. You keeping up? I'm jumping here. But that's what what we do here. We have a self-admitted American Taliban member, John, I won't say it right, but Linda, let's go with that. He was paroled just a week ago Thursday from a federal prison in Indiana. He served 17 years of a 20-year sentence because he aided Taliban people. And, and with regard to that, they murdered people. They murdered American people, right? And now he's out of jail. And a lot of people are really upset about that. And he, well, that's okay. He was in Afghanistan doing all kinds of bad things. And, and he's barred now from traveling and using a cell phone or the internet. It's kind of too bad about the travel because if he could travel, he could go to Canada and the prime mistake, they would write him a check for 10 or $12 million because that's what he does with terrorists. The world is a bloody mess. I got to tell you, it is upside down. All of this craziness is going on. Recently in Canada, they put, well, recently, I think a couple of years ago, actually, but recently it concluded, they did a study on Indian women in, uh, in that country saying so many Indian women are being murdered that we need to have a study. The study cost upwards to $100 million, 1,200 pages, and the conclusion is, is that they're really dead, uh, I guess. I, I mean, I shouldn't make light of it. This is such a serious matter. I get it, right? But they didn't really have a conclusion. But they did come up with some new verbiage for me, at least, to understand. The report says women, girls, and 2SLGBTQQIA are being targeted from all sides by partners, family members, acquaintances, and serial killers. Do you think? We kind of know that already because they're dead. These poor women, they're dead. And, and instead you're telling me that they're Indian, they're women, they're girls, and, and they're two-spirited, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, questioning, intersex, and something else and something else. That's far too much information. People died, okay? What are you gonna do about it? I, I mean, you need to find the murderers. I think they're telling me, because these girls are Indian, that they should have special service from our country. That's not right. I mean, all people that are murdered should have the same kind of justice. The, the police, if the police aren't doing their job, this would be the implication to me that the police are saying you're Indian, so we're not going to care about you. I don't think, I don't believe that. 
I, I think all murders are treated the same. I don't, I don't think it matters what color you are. But certainly the uh, implication is, is that that's a big deal. You know, th this report goes on to say that Indian women have been targets for violence and discrimination throughout Canada's history. They suffer from violent crime. An astonishing 61% of Indian women aged 15 to 25 reported violent uh, victimization in the previous 12 months. Okay. But you know what? There's also another group. That would be white men. There's three times the number of Indian women that are murdered with regards to white men. And Indian men are two and a half times or something like that that are murdered more than Indian women. Why are we breaking this down? I, I think a government that does that is racist, probably stupid, and certainly not fair. I, I mean, if, if the police are not doing their job, you need to get rid of the policemen and, and get other police people to come in and do a good job. I, I mean, $100 million in a couple of years trying to sort out why they're getting killed. I mean, that, that's up to the Indian nation to sort out and the welfare and, and, and people, the way you raise your kids maybe. I mean, I don't know all that. Preventive stuff, if you want to really be preventive, teach these girls how to defend their own lives. I mean, with high stats like that, should they not be armed? Should they not be trained to have a pepper spray gun at least or a mace gun? Uh, Probably a real gun, boom, de boom, de boom, protect their lives. That's preventive. Instead, they're marching. Protect our women. I don't know how to protect your women, Indian women. Nobody knows how to do that. So they have to protect themselves. But you can certainly get their killers, and their killers, I believe, are being sought after just as much as if a murderer murdered a purple man, a white man, a green man. It doesn't matter. If it does matter, Y'all need to get to the root of that instead of talking about this and spending hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh my, I could go on and on about this. Give us your comments and your input and we'll do another show on this someday with a lot more information, including input from you. See ya.